Have you ever pondered about the true difference between a typhoon and a hurricane? These are two names that often stir fear and awe in equal measure. They are powerful, destructive, but also fascinating. Forces of nature that have been the subject of countless myths and misconceptions. Some people think they are entirely different phenomena, while others believe they are one and the same. But what if I told you that the truth lies somewhere in between? That's right. These swirling tempests of wind and rain, though they share many characteristics, are not exactly identical. Behind the scenes, a complex interplay of atmospheric conditions and oceanic currents is at work, creating these awe-inspiring storms. It's a science that's as intricate as it is intriguing, and it's a journey we're about to embark on. So grab your raincoats and brace yourselves. We're about to weather the storm. So, let's delve into the mysterious world of typhoons and hurricanes. First, we need to understand what a typhoon really is. A typhoon, in essence, is a mature tropical cyclone. Now, if you're wondering what a tropical cyclone is, it's a rapidly rotating storm system characterized by a low-pressure center, high winds, and a spiral arrangement of thunderstorms that produce heavy rain. Sounds intense, doesn't it? The formation of a typhoon is a fascinating process that involves a perfect storm of conditions. It all starts with a disturbance in the atmosphere over warm ocean waters near the equator. As the warm, moist air rises, it creates an area of low pressure beneath it. This causes surrounding air to rush in, which then also heats up and rises. This cycle continues, causing the storm to grow in size and power. The Earth's rotation then sets the whole system spinning, creating the distinctive cyclone shape we associate with typhoons. Now, you might be curious about where these powerful weather phenomena typically occur. Typhoons are most commonly found in the Northwest Pacific Ocean, specifically to the east of the Dateline. This region sees more tropical cyclones than any other part of the world, with an average of 26 forming each year. You might have also heard the terms hurricane or cyclone being used interchangeably with typhoon. While they might seem different, they are essentially the same type of storm. The terminology merely changes based on where in the world the storm is happening. In the Atlantic and Northeast Pacific, they're called hurricanes. In the South Pacific and Indian Ocean, they're known as cyclones. And in the Northwest Pacific, they're referred to as typhoons. And there you have it, the typhoon in all its tempestuous glory. A force of nature that starts with a simple atmospheric disturbance and grows into a swirling maelstrom of wind and rain capable of causing significant damage. So, that's what we mean when we talk about a typhoon. But how does it compare to a hurricane? Now let's shift our attention to hurricanes. A hurricane is a powerful storm that forms over warm ocean waters near the equator. But unlike their Pacific counterparts, hurricanes occur in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific Oceans. The key ingredient for their formation is warm, moist air. As this air rises, it creates an area of low pressure beneath, which then pulls in the surrounding air, creating a continuous upward motion. As the moist air rises and cools off, the water in the air forms clouds. This whole process continues with the clouds and wind spinning around the eye of the storm, growing in size and speed until a hurricane is born. Now, how big can a hurricane get? Well, they can be up to 600 miles across and have strong winds spiraling inward and upward at speeds of 75 to 200 miles per hour. Each hurricane usually lasts for over a week, moving 10 to 20 miles per hour over the open ocean. Hurricanes are categorized using the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale, which ranges from one to five. Category one is the least destructive, while category five hurricanes can cause catastrophic damage. And how are they named? Hurricanes are given names from a list produced by the World Meteorological Organization. Each list is used in rotation and recycled every six years. If a hurricane is particularly destructive or deadly, its name is retired and replaced with a new one. Regions affected by hurricanes include the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the eastern coast of the United States. These areas are particularly susceptible due to their proximity to the warm waters of the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico, which provide the ideal conditions for hurricane formation. It's important to note that while hurricanes can cause immense damage due to their size, speed, 
and capacity to trigger storm surges and tornadoes, they also play a key role in regulating our planet's temperature by moving heat from the equator toward the poles. Now that we understand hurricanes, it's time to compare and contrast them with typhoons. You might be surprised to know that typhoons and hurricanes have quite a few similarities. These mighty forces of nature, despite being known by different names, are essentially the same type of weather phenomenon. They are both tropical cyclones, which is the generic term for a rotating organized system of clouds and thunderstorms that originates over tropical or subtropical waters. When it comes to their formation, both hurricanes and typhoons are born from the same conditions. They require warm, moist air as fuel, which they find in abundance over the tropical oceans. This warm air rises, causing an area of lower pressure beneath. As the warm air continues to rise, it cools, forming clouds and thunderstorms. The process continues, with the storm growing in size and strength, until it becomes a fully-fledged tropical cyclone. Another similarity between typhoons and hurricanes is the way they're classified. Both use the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale, a 1 to 5 rating system based on a hurricane's sustained wind speed. This scale estimates potential property damage, with a Category 5 storm expected to cause catastrophic damage. Their impact, too, is strikingly similar. Both typhoons and hurricanes bring with them torrential rain, high winds and storm surges. These elements combined can lead to devastating effects, such as flooding, land erosion and significant damage to infrastructure and vegetation. Moreover, both typhoons and hurricanes can spawn tornadoes. These smaller, faster-spinning storms can cause their own path of destruction, adding to the damage caused by the larger cyclone. In terms of monitoring and tracking, both hurricanes and typhoons are closely watched by meteorologists using satellites, aircraft reconnaissance and weather buoys. This allows for early warning systems to be put in place, giving people time to prepare or evacuate. So, despite their different names, typhoons and hurricanes share many characteristics. But what sets them apart? While they may seem similar, typhoons and hurricanes have some distinct differences. Let's talk about where these storms occur. Hurricanes are born in the Atlantic and Northeast Pacific Oceans, while typhoons originate in the Northwest Pacific. So, it's not about which one is stronger or more dangerous, it's about where you are in the world. If you're in Japan or the Philippines, you're dealing with typhoons. But if you're in Florida or the Caribbean, you're facing hurricanes. Now, let's move on to size. You may be surprised to learn that typhoons are typically larger than hurricanes. The average typhoon measures around 500 miles in diameter, while hurricanes average around 300 miles. That's a substantial difference, especially when you consider the area of impact. The larger the storm, the wider the area that can be affected by its strong winds and heavy rains. So, while both can be equally intense, a typhoon can potentially affect a larger area. And what about the time of year? Well, both typhoons and hurricanes have their own seasons. Hurricane season in the Atlantic runs from June through November, with the peak period being mid-August to late October. On the other hand, Typhoons can occur at any time of the year, but are most likely to form between May and October, with September being the peak month. So, depending on where you live, you may be more at risk at certain times of the year. One more notable topic is the direction of rotation. In the Northern Hemisphere, hurricanes and typhoons rotate in a counterclockwise direction, whereas cyclones in the Southern Hemisphere spin clockwise. This is due to the Coriolis effect, a phenomenon caused by the Earth's rotation. While this doesn't affect the storm's intensity, it does influence its direction and path. So, the primary differences lie in their location and size. But what does this all mean? Beyond their scientific differences, typhoons and hurricanes have a profound impact on our lives. These powerful storms, with their high winds and torrential rains, can wreak havoc on communities. Homes, schools, hospitals and businesses are often destroyed, leaving thousands of people displaced. Infrastructure like roads and power lines can be severely damaged, disrupting essential services like healthcare and education, and making recovery efforts even more challenging. But it's not just about the immediate destruction. The economic impact of these storms is staggering. From the cost of rebuilding 
to the loss of income for businesses and individuals, these storms can have a long-lasting effect on local and even national economies. And let's not forget about the environmental impact. These storms can cause serious damage to ecosystems, both on land and in the sea. Forests can be flattened, coral reefs can be damaged, and the heavy rainfall can cause serious soil erosion and water pollution. But why is understanding these storms so important? Well, the better we understand these storms, the better we can prepare for them. Accurate forecasting can give communities more time to evacuate or prepare, potentially saving lives and reducing damages. And by studying these storms, scientists can also learn more about our changing climate and how we might need to adapt in the future. So you see, it's not just about the science, it's about understanding how these storms affect us, how they change our world, and how we can better prepare for them. It's about understanding the risks and making informed decisions to protect ourselves, our communities, and our planet. So, let's summarize what we've learned about typhoons and hurricanes. Despite their different names, these two natural phenomena are essentially the same beast, just showing up in different parts of the world. Both are powerful storm systems, characterized by strong winds and heavy rainfall, born from warm ocean waters. However, they do have their unique quirks. Typhoons generally occur in the Western Pacific Ocean, while hurricanes make their grand entrance in the Atlantic or the Eastern Pacific. Their impacts, while similar, can vary based on their location and the preparedness of the communities they affect. In the face of climate change, Understanding these forces of nature becomes even more crucial. As our world continues to heat up, these weather events may become more frequent and potentially more devastating. Knowledge is power, and in this case, it could be the key to our survival. Remember, understanding the forces of nature can help us prepare for the future. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay safe. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps our channel grow and continue to create new and interesting content. We encourage you to express your thoughts on the video in the comments and share our content with others.